In this video, we're going to be learning how you can alter the tick formatting in matplotlib in Python, especially on logarithmic charts and other kinds of charts that break the normal axis scaling. And when you want something a bit more customized, like maybe you want to add, say, dollars here, or you want comma separation for the groups of thousands and that kind of thing, or you want to control the amount of decimal places, the amount of precision that we have here. I'll show you how to do that in a few seconds. So the first thing we'll do here is we'll just go ahead and look at this tutorial section that I've got here. So we'll do vim tutorial.py. So this is just a basic shell. As you can see, I'm just reading in this CSV here, this Bitcoin historical price.csv. I'm converting the date column to make sure it's in date time format. Always good practice when dealing with map.lib. And then I'm using this style 538 because it looks kind of cool. So let's just plot this very basically. So we'll do plt.plot and we'll do df.date and df.value. And then we'll do a plt.show here just so that it actually shows up. Okay, so if we go ahead and print that on out, um, we'll get a nice graph here of the historical Bitcoin price. And as you can see, all of these are formatted to whole numbers. Firstly, we're not showing any like, pennies or anything like that. And we also don't have the thousands grouping and we also don't have the dollars. So how do we go about fixing this? Well, the trick is to use a special type of formatting language, essentially a mini language within Python itself that allows you to tell Python what kind of format you want the output to be in. It's very similar to that which is used in F strings. If you've seen those before in Python, in fact, it is the same thing but I'll show you maybe a few more bells and whistles than you're normally used to. So let's go ahead and actually dig into this. So let's go in here. And the first step we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to convert to using fig and x is equal to plt.subplots. This is just so we can grab the axis object directly. If you haven't seen this before, you can think of it like fig as the whole the whole graph, the whole window, and X has just been one particular graph. In our case, we only have one. So all we have to do is do X dot Y axis in our case, because we're doing the Y axis dot set major formatter. Now there's also a minor formatter. And as you can guess, my major ticks are the, the bigger ones. So normally used for like large whole values and minor ticks you generally see once you zoom into the graph. It's important to edit both of them to be whatever you want them to be. So this is the sort of standard format that you're gonna get. So the simplest would be just to have X like that. So if you imagine some sort of F string, right? And you've got a variable X that you wanna show inside this string where you've got some information, that's how you do it, right? You'd, enc you'd enclose it in curly braces with the variable name. Now the variable name that you have to use here is just X. That's like the default with the label will get passed into there. But we can do some other things. One thing in particular is that we can add decimal formatting. So we can do something like colon dot, and then you need a number. So however many decimal places you want, let's say three, and then F for floating point essentially. You can go ahead and check this out over here, which is where they give the different kinds of letters and things like that. There's also some more examples later on that you can check out. So if we go ahead and try this, we'll do Python tutorials. You'll see they're now all to thousands. Now that doesn't particularly help us because when we get down here and we're dealing with the smaller things here, it refuses to show us anything but integers, but Maybe over here, when Bitcoin was at a lower price, we can see some sign at least of non-integer pricing. Maybe not, but you get the idea here. So let's go ahead and add the dollar sign and also the thousand separator. 
Now, the thousand separator is very easy to remember. You can just use a comma there, or I believe you can use an N, and the N will adjust. So some countries use a dot instead of a comma for the thousand separator, so that can be quite useful. But I'm just going to use the comma. And then we can also, we can put just text outside of these curly brackets. So I can just put a dollar there. I can also just put any other text I want and that will show up, but I'm not gonna do that in this case. If we write that on out again, you can see we've now got the dolly here, which is lovely. So let's try this for a log graph and see what we get. I'll just disable this for now, just so that I can show you what a log graph regularly looks like. So if we just plot a log graph, we can see that this is all in scientific notation and it, get, it gets very difficult to read. Like this, this is not nice to read three times 10 to the minus one. Yes, you can work out that that's 0 0.3, but it's not great. So what we can do is we can uncomment that line that we had and if we try it now, you can see everything is three decimal places with the comma separator and a dollar sign, which makes things a lot nicer to look at. And you can zoom right in here. Now you can see we've kind of got a, a clash here, right? Where we've got these minor ticks are showing up in the old scientific notation, whereas the major ticks are in scalar notation, sort of, that we've created. The way you fix that is just by essentially copying and pasting this line here. So you can do YP and they can do like a minor formatter. So again, just the major and minor ticks, are the, the two kind of ticks that you'll encounter. Now, one problem with changing that is that obviously now you, you get all of the minor ticks and it can look not nice on this scale. But this isn't the scale that we were looking at in the previous section there. We were looking right down at this sort of microscopic level. And you can see this looks a lot nicer. So it basically depends on what sort of scale you're going to be saving your image. If you want a chart that looks nice like this on the sort of macro level, you probably don't want to set the smaller ticks. And in fact, by default, matplotlib removes minor ticks on log charts at this sort of scale. But if I were to zoom in here and just to be looking at maybe, you know, 20 or a month's worth of price action, then it's much nicer to have these kind of ticks. You can find more information about the tick formatting here on this Python docs section. There's also a section on tick formatting here where you can look at different kinds of inbuilt tick formatting that matplotlib has available. So you could, for example, just set the axes directly themselves. So you can set them to letters or something like that. You can also look at the locators. Now I haven't covered those in this tutorial, but it's very, very similar. Essentially you just do major locator, And this allows you to mess around with how often the major and minor ticks appear, which can be very helpful 